The Mummers, in the Little Theater of the Air. your lights. Turn them out. Ah, have you heard the story, The House of Purple Shadows? Eh? Then listen while the hermit tells you the story. <laughs> Yesterday we weren't so alarmed. When he didn't come to the office this morning, well, then we concluded something must be wrong. He's here in the house. We'll find out in a minute, Benson. Yeah. Mm, it's dark in this hallway, Mr. Lamont. There must be a light switch here somewhere. Oh, yes, here it is. Oh, there. That's better. He hasn't been sleeping here at his house for over a year. No, but they said at the club that he wasn't there yesterday. He hadn't slept in his room there last night. Well, in that case, he may be here. That's what I'm afraid of. Maybe he had a stroke or something and wasn't able to get to a phone. We look upstairs first. Yes, I think we'd better. Ah, here's the stairway. It's queer, isn't it? If he came here in the evening, wouldn't he have left some lights on? That's what I was thinking. Ah. It's gloomy in this house. No wonder he shut it all up and went to live at the club after his wife died. Mr. Davidson has always been a peculiar man. I haven't been his attorney as long as I have without realizing that. Mm -hmm. Do you know which bedroom is his? Yes, I think this one. At least we'll try this room first. Yeah. Is it locked? No, well, it just seems to stick. Must be the door is swell. Let me try it, Mr. Lamont. Oh, I'm getting it now. Here it comes. <sighs> Gee whiz. What's the matter, Benson? I don't know, but when you opened the door, it was as if something grabbed a hold of my hand. What? Well, I know it sounds queer, but it was if an icicle touched well, it's me. It's just the cold air rushing out of this room. It's as black as night in here. Curtains and drapes are heavily drawn. Now, if I can find a light in here. Oh, here it is, Mr. Lamont. Uh, he's not in here. No, not here. Maybe this isn't his room. Well, if he's going to stay in the house, he'd sleep in here. This room hasn't been touched for a long time, has it? Well, I guess not. Mr. Lamont, isn't it queer that this room should be so cold? Well, no, there's nothing strange about that. A room that's all closed up gets damp and cold. I have a feeling that it's going to start snowing in here any minute. This cold air oh, seems to freeze your very blood. Mr. Benson, I, I don't think your employer stayed in this house night before last. I don't think anyone's been in this house for a long time. Well, then, where is he? I don't know. We look in the other rooms up here. Hmm. Turn off his light. Shall we close the door? Yes, leave everything just as we found it. If he finds out that we've been snooping around up here, he may not like it. He's very peculiar. I know, but certainly he'd want us to hunt for him if he thought we were worried. If we thought he was lying up here dead. He doesn't like people prying into his affairs. Uh, that's true. Yeah, we'll look in this upstairs library. If he's not in there, well then, means he's not here in the house. Yes, What was that? Sounded like a moan. Uh, yes, it did. Uh, uh, Mr. Davison, uh, where are you? Uh, Mr. Davison? Mr. Davison, where are you? Oh, he's not here in the library. No, it sounded as if it came from downstairs. Yes, I guess it did. Hurry, let's get down there. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Davison, uh, where are you? Not here in the living room. No, but we heard a moan from somewhere. Sounded like it. Mr. Lamont, look. Look, do you see... See what I'm pointing at? Where? That book on the table. It moved. It It moved all by itself. What? It did. I saw it. I, I saw it. It moved from one side of the table to the other. Nonsense. That's impossible. My eyes aren't playing me tricks that badly. I saw it move. Come over here. Look, uh, 
You see where it's been lying? Imprint in the dust. Yes. Now it's over here. Now, wait a minute. This is getting a little too deep for me. Oh. Benson, what's the matter now? I felt that touch on my hand again. I did. Hey, there is something queer going on in here. Look. Look over there at the window. You see that? Yes. Yeah. It's like someone was touching those drapes and making them move. Yes. Mr. Lamont, let's get out of here. Let's get out. Hurry. Right. They couldn't see me. They couldn't hear my voice. Isn't there anyone who can hear me speak? Oh, if you know how badly I needed help, how hard I tried to make them hear me. And you people who are of the world and know it. You who can step to the mirror, look at it, and see your face and body reflected there. Oh, how thankful you should be. Just a few moments ago, I managed to propel myself to the mirror in the hall. I looked into it. I stood directly in front of it. There was nothing there. I have no face, no body, no arms, no hands. And yet, and yet a sound came from whatever it is that I am, like a moan. My lawyer, Mr. Lamont, and my bookkeeper, Mr. Benson, came rushing down the stairs. I could see them. But great heaven, they couldn't see me. I called out, Help me! Help me! But they went out the door, slammed it shut, left me here alone. Oh, doomed to what? Isn't there anyone who can tell me what's happened to me? Two days ago, yes, I can still reckon days, I left the office and went to the club. It was about an hour before dinner. I sat reading the paper. Suddenly all the letters began to jump and dance before my eyes. I distinctly heard something whispering in my ears. Go to your house. Go to your house. I threw down the paper. No one seemed to be watching me. I was so frightened I felt I must be ill. But I couldn't tell anyone in the club. There was a buzzing in my ears. And I could hear that voice saying, Go to your house. Go to your house. I walked out the door down the street. Some power seemed to be forcing me to go. I walked fast. I approached my house. I haven't lived in it since my wife died. I looked up at it. It seemed to be weaving back and forth. Black clouds hung over it. I walked up the steps. I reached the outside door. Mechanically, I took the key from my pocket, inserted it in the lock, opened the door. I stood inside. Now, why was I here? Why had I come to the house? I didn't know. I walked into the living room. Suddenly, I felt a great rush of cold wind. It engulfed me, whirled round me, seemed to be wrapping itself about me. Help! Help! What is it? Help! Help! My body is freezing. My blood has turned to ice. Help! 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 I can't move! I... I couldn't move. The room seemed to be bathed in a purple twilight. It was then that I realized that I no longer had a physical body. I seemed to see everything in the room but myself. Look down at your hand and arm. Realize what it would mean to have the feeling of it, but not be able to see it. Can you imagine such torture? I can make things move, but I can't see the hand that moves them. Oh, horrible, terrible calamity that has befallen me. How long am I going to go on like this? What sort of a world am I living in? 
in the purple shadows between this and the next. Someone have mercy on me. Help me. Great heaven, someone to help me. Mr. Benson. Yes, Mr. Lamont. Before we go into the next room to talk to Mr. Davidson's niece, I... I think there are a few things we should settle between us. Yes, sir. Yesterday ended a year since the disappearance of Mr. Davison. There's no doubt about it. He's dead. He must be, sir. He was kidnapped, which I'm inclined to think happened. Kidnappers must have gotten frightened and killed him. There were no ransom notes received? No, because they became frightened after they killed him. But his body? I don't know what they did with it. It's possible that though we dragged the river, it's still there. We've gone all over that before. That isn't what I want to talk to you about. It's... It's his house. Yes. Police have been through it dozens of times since the day last year when you and I went through it. I know they have. If they saw or heard anything peculiar, they failed to mention it, as far as you and I are concerned. I have never mentioned what happened to a soul. Nor I. It's been so long now, I... I wonder if it could have been true. I often think the same thing. According to Mr. Davison's will, the house and part of his estate is to be deeded to his niece, Loretta Hathaway. She and her husband are in the next room. I think it best, Mr. Benson, that we never tell her what occurred to us that day. I agree. She and her husband are not wealthy. Money in the house will be very welcome to them. We shouldn't spoil it for them. No. All right. We'll go inside now and read the will to them. Mr. Hathaway will take over Mr. Davison's business. Think you'll find him a nice man to work for Come. Let's go inside. Yes. Dan, you think you're going to like it here in this house? It almost seems to be too grand for us. I know it. Weren't you surprised to find out that Uncle Jim had willed us so much? Business, half his money, and this house? Well, rather. But then, of course, there was no one else for him to leave it to. I know. Dan, have you ever thought he might have committed suicide? No. I never thought that. Mother said he wasn't always as peculiar as he was during his last years. What do you mean? Well, I remember her saying that it was after he built this house and he and Aunt Mary moved into it that he began to change. You know, there's something about this place that would make anybody change. Now, what do you mean? What I mean, Loretta, is that why it's so blamed cold in here. The house has been shut up for over three years, Dan. I know, but it's warm outside. This house is like an icebox, and we've had the windows open all day. It'll get thawed out in a few days. Mm, I hope so. I suppose we better retire. You take charge of the office tomorrow, don't you? Yes. Poor Uncle Jim. I still keep thinking that he may have committed suicide. I've often wondered if they went through his desk and things to see if he left any notes. Oh, yes, they've gone through his things dozens of times. Dan. Yes? It was three years ago that Aunt Mary died, wasn't it? Oh, about that. She took an overdose of sleeping powder by mistake. Then six months after that, Mother died. Then Uncle Jim disappeared. A lot of tragedy in one family in a few years, isn't it? I wouldn't dwell on that, Loretta. What are you doing? I just thought I'd go through this desk to see if I could find anything that no one else has discovered. I wouldn't look through those things tonight. Let's go upstairs. I will in a minute. Dan. Dan, come here. What is it? Look at this. Look at this writing. Well, what is it? That's what I'm asking you. Just purple marks on a piece of paper. I know, but what peculiar marks. Like they were made with a fingernail and written in some foreign language. What do you suppose it is? I haven't any idea. It's probably been there for ages. If it had any significance, the police would have used it. I know, but it's lying right here on top of all these papers. As if it had been dropped here just recently. Dan, feel of that paper. It's ice cold. Yes, it's like everything else in this house. Oh, come on. You can rummage through that desk tomorrow. I'm going upstairs. Do you realize it's nearly midnight? Dan! Dan! For heaven's sakes, what is it? Look! Look! See that window blind? Look at it. Why, why, it's moving. Yes. Look. Look at it. It's moving up and down all by itself. Oh, I, I see what it is, Loretta. There's something the matter with the roller. 
You've seen that happen to window curtains before. They fly way up to the top or way down to the bottom of the window when the roller's broken. But, Dan, it, it was just as if some unseen hand moved that window curtain. That's what it was like. Some unseen hand moved that curtain. Loretta and Dan see strange things, too. <laughs> Can it be that Davison is still trying to make himself known to the people in his house? The hermit will tell you before the night is done. <laughs> now, the hermit again. <laughs> Midnight in the house. Loretta and Dan are sleeping, but not... Well, listen. <laughs> no. I am not sleeping. I never sleep. You know that I've been wandering in this, my house, for over a year. Living in hideous torture... Oh, I've tried to make someone understand, but it's useless. They only grow frightened, as Loretta did earlier this evening. But she didn't get frightened enough, no. I'll tell you why, what I've discovered in these long, endless hours that I've spent here. There's something strange about this place. Something horrible. You hear the wind? It's beginning again. About midnight every night, it springs up. There's a queer purple glow over everything. And the cold sears me all through again, penetrating to my very marrow. I know. I have no form that you can see, or I can see. But I can feel pain just the same. Such pain as you never dreamed of in your normal world. Loretta and Dan will suffer the same transformation as I have if they don't get out of this house. I've been convinced for a long time now that it must have been true that my wife Mary realized there was something wrong in this house. That's why she took the sleeping powders that night. She took her own life through fear. But why didn't she warn me so that I could die? For as it is now, I may go on suffering like this for ages and centuries. There may be thousands of houses all over the world that are under a spell like this one is. There must be other people living in this strange world like I am. Here it comes again. This wind that lives in this world of purple shadows. I've got to warn Loretta and Dan. I've got to get them out of the house. I must propel myself up the stairs and open the door to their room. I'm climbing the stairs now. I can see in the night and see everything but myself. I think my hand is touching the banister. Now, I'm at the top of the stairs. I must open the door to their room. It's making me suffer such pain. I must warn them. Loretta. Loretta. She doesn't hear me. Loretta, you must get out of here. Loretta. Oh. Oh. She's turning in her sleep. Wake up. Wake up. What? Wake up, Dan. What did you say? Wake up. Look. There's a strange light in this room. And where's the wind coming from? Loretta. Get out. Get out of this house. It's going to be too late. There is a strange light in here. Turn up the night lamp. It doesn't seem to make any difference. The light is getting stronger and stronger. 
the wind. It's freezing me. Freezing my blood. Loretta, I feel it too. Let's get out of this room. Help. I, I can't move. I can't move. Loretta, I can't move either. I, I'm powerless. Help. Someone help us. Help. I can feel my whole body changing. Loretta, what's happening to us? Dan, help me. I, I reached out for you and knocked over the lamp. Loretta, I can't see my hand anymore. I can't see my arms or my legs. Look. Look. Standing in this room. It, it, it's Uncle Jim. Jim Davison. Yes. You see me now. For your change, the same as I am. What's happened to us? We've entered a strange world. It's this house. It's under some horrible spell. I've been in these shadows since the day I disappeared. Uncle Jim, is there nothing we can do? Nothing? There's our only hope, see? You knocked over that lamp, Dan. This room will soon be all afire. Yes. Let it burn. They burn down the house and give us the freedom of death. It's our only hope, our only salvation. Death, give us freedom. Let us get out of this torture. Have mercy. Save us. Have mercy. Save us. What's the news, Mr. Lamont? Did they find the bodies? They've gone through the charred wreck of that house for hours. There's no trace of a body there. Well, you think they got out before the house burned? Then where are they? Benson, I don't think they got out. But they didn't find their bodies, Mr. Lamont. They didn't find them. But no one will ever hear of them again. What do you mean? It's difficult to explain to anyone but you... Because you and I know there was something strange about that place. Yes. I was with the firemen when we went through the wreckage. It was their bedroom. There was nothing there. But Benson, as we were going through it, smoke, of course, was smoldering there. But a huge purple flame sprung up and seemed to lose itself in the atmosphere. It startled me. I stepped back. Firemen thought I'd found something. Of course, I... I couldn't explain to them. I don't know that I can explain to you. But it was as if... Well... As if something registered in my mind. And a voice said to me... You will never find their bodies. They're gone. Gone forever. and occurrences mentioned in the Hermit's Cave are fictitious, and similarity to persons, places, or occurrences is purely accidental. 